Hi everyone. With this new feature, you can build any slider you want in a couple of minutes and without any code. To explain the ins and outs of this feature, we're going to build the slider we can see right here. To get started, let's first head over to an empty page. We could start our build by selecting one of the ready to use sections, for example, this one, which already has a slider within, which we can then customize. And this actually already brings us pretty close to the end result. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna build this carousel slider element from scratch. So let's delete this one, head back to the insert panel, go to element and then down to interactive. And here we can see the two slider elements. We have the carousel slider element and the slideshow. Slideshows are individual slides that cover the full width of the screen. So let's drag it right here. As you can see, it covers the full width of the screen. And then with the carousel element, you can see multiple slides. When it comes to customizing them, they work in exactly the same way. And for this tutorial, we're going to build with a carousel element. So let's delete the slideshow and continue working with this one right here. If we go back to the example slider, we can see that the slider consists of an image with a button on top of it, a bit of text, and then the header and the navigation on the top. So let's do the same thing right here. To accomplish this, let's drag in a single row within the slider, then drag in the navigation in this row, and also insert some text in this row. The navigation and the text is underneath each other, but if we change the direction to horizontal, it's next to each other, change the order, then set the distribution setting to this one right here, and then delete the minimum height, and we're already getting a little bit closer. This text should be our products, and in the brand styles, I've already included a couple of brand colors and text styles. So if we head over to the text and then style, we can select the header text style. Then when it comes to editing the slides, in the layer panel, in the slider section, we can see slides. And these are the individual slides that we can customize. And right here in the layer panel, we can duplicate slides to create more. And we can also delete them again. Now let's customize this first slide. And there we go. When it comes to editing the slider, we have a bunch more options. Go to edit slider and scroll down to the slider options. First of all, we can navigate to different slides. We can change the alignment. Um, we can change the snapping. So does it snap from the start of the slide or does it snap to the middle or the center of the slide or no snapping at all? We can change the gap. So the gap that exists between individual slides, you can see right here. Let's change it back to 24. And then we have a few other options we have the slide size. We can set it to manual or automatic. When we change it to manual, we can adjust all the dimensions of each individual slide. Then we have the number of slides. What this means is how many slides are visible in a certain viewport. So now it's set to three slides, but we can also change it to four slides or to two slides. And then we can change this for each individual viewport. Let's change it back to three slides. And then last but not least is animation. Within animation, there are a few different options. We can change the speed, which is the speed at which the slider moves. So it's now at 300. So let's preview and move the slider. As you can see, it's pretty fast, but we can also make it a bit slower by changing it to 800. Let's preview again. And as you can see, it moves way slower. Another option is the loop. And what we can do with this is basically say, does the slider stop when you arrive at the last slide or does it loop? So when we set the loop to yes, preview again, the slider will loop. 
Last but not least, we also have autoplay, which we can change to yes or no. If we set this to yes, we can then set the delay. And what it basically means is how long it takes before the slider moves to the next slide. So if we change this to, let's say, a thousand, then click on preview, it automatically or it auto plays the slider and moves it to the right. Then we can, of course, adjust the speed of the delay to move very slow or to move pretty fast. One final thing we need to do with the slider is take a look at the responsiveness. A nice thing about the slider elements is that it's already responsive from the get-go, but it always requires a little bit of tweaking for different viewports. So let's go to the laptop viewport. This still looks really, really nice. The tablet one, let's change the height to fill. And this still looks pretty nice. And then if we go to the mobile view, it's starting to look a little bit weird. I think one thing we can do is change the size of the text to 36 and then change the size of the icons a little bit. So let's change this to 30 by 30 also for the other one. And then also change the size of the icons within just a little bit to 15 by 15 and then also for this one. And here we go. We have created a really nice slider in a couple of minutes that's also responsive. That's it for the video. I hope you understand the ins and outs of this feature and good luck.